Hi, it's been a long time since my last learning Arduino tutorial. So here is episode six of Tim's adventure into Arduino. Okay, so this gag has got nothing to do with the topic of this video. Yeah, so I'll need to add it in the bottom. Hey, Down the bottom. Yeah. I'm just going for a five kilometer walk. Dad, I'm just going for a 20 kilometer walk. What is your obsession with fitness? A Pokemon Go. Oh really? What a ridiculous game. It's not stupid, I'll show you. You won't catch me playing that rubbish. Where's your father? He's on the roof. What's he doing up there? What are you doing up there? Wait a minute. I've got to get this zoo bat. I haven't seen one of these before. Really? I've almost got it. Okay, to summarize what we've learned up until now. In episode one, we covered the basics of what an Arduino was and what it could do. Episode two saw Tim installing the Arduino IDE, learning about digital outputs and writing his first program. Then we went to digital inputs and soldering in episode three. Episode four saw Tim learning about pull-up resistors and analog inputs. And in episode five, Tim learned the importance of debouncing and made a start on an Uber project that I set for him. I've kept this episode fairly short because it's a fairly heavy topic for a beginner. In this episode, Tim handles a full code walkthrough of the debounce tutorial. If you're watching on a PC, then I suggest opening up the Arduino ID and following along. We can probably close that one. Yep. Uh, and then go to File, Examples. Uh, now it should be Digital and there should be Debounce. Yes, yep. that's the one. <clears throat> so what this does is it deals with the debounce. We can probably just go through a quick run through. Yep. It's got a button, and you've got an LED to something up before. Yeah, all straightforward. So let's just change that button pin to 22. This program keeps a record of the current LED state, and also the button state, and also the last button state. There's another two variables called last debounce time and debounce delay. Yeah. Going back to our little diagram. Okay, I've registered a, a zero coming along. So therefore, let's just ignore everything else that happens for 50 milliseconds. Generally speaking, you'll see this sort of pulsing occur on every single button. Anything, Even, anything physical, right? That's right. You can buy special buttons that have uh, a debounce inbuilt and other buttons that try and minimize the amount of mechanical errors yeah, that, that yeah. occur. But you'll see it occur across every single button. So anything mechanical really. Anything mechanical. But electronic type solid state stuff doesn't have this problem? Yeah, so solid state won't have a problem. Yeah. No. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's continue on looking through the, the code. Setup, pin mode, uh, button pin is input. input, LED pin output, so it's okay. all fairly straightforward. Okay, let's hit the loop. Let's see if I can translate. <laughs> Alright. All right. Okay, uh, int reading equals digital read. So integer mm -hmm. reading equals digital read. I don't remember seeing reading it on this other list. This is a new variable. That int reading, that is yeah. a local variable. So when the program comes into that function loop, it will create a variable called reading. Yeah. And when it exits, it will destroy that variable. Oh, okay. It's called a local variable. As opposed to the global variable. <laughs> That's top. right, yeah. So you'll see that it's actually both defined a variable and Not also a assigning it at the same time. So yep. we've got int reading. Yep, and it equals digital read. So read <coughs> either a one or a zero, or high or low from pin 22, effectively. Yep. Button pin. Uh, I see an if statement here. It's a variable comparison. So okay, yeah. exclamation mark equals means not equal to. Say for example reading equals one and last button state which is originally so low, is low which yep. is low. Oops, sorry. Yep. Um, so then if we've got a high then do this thing. Okay then so then do that. Uh, last debounce time equals millis. So what's that? Yeah, so millis is an internal Arduino IDE function which yep. returns a, a millisecond counter. If you enter into the loop program and you hit that last debounce time equals millis, it might be reading um, 100,000 because it's an internal clock. Yeah. Right. What's the purpose of this clock? It's just a handy clock. So in this example, you can actually time how long things take within the loop. Okay. So if this thing, which might be later now, yeah. um, <laughs> minus the last debounce time is more than the debounce delay, then do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just figure out. <coughs> so say so last debounce time is 10. Yes, because it's just up here. Yep. So, it's now, a, so it says snapshotted a moment. So last debounce yep. time captures 10 at the moment, yep. while Mills 
moves on and keeps ticking. Now say it takes five milliseconds to get to the if statement. Yep, and so... So then that function will now be returning... 15. 15, yep. yep. And 15 is less than... So no, 15, 15 minus... 15 minus, minus 10. 10 equals, which is 5, five. is greater, greater than, than the debounce delay, which we know is 50 for up here, yep. then do this. Yep, but so in this case... It's not, it's, because yeah, yeah. 5 is, isn't is greater than Yeah, so move on 50. to the next thing. So if that doesn't happen, then digital write LED pin button state. So you're setting the LED pin to be the high or low. So button state at this stage will be 0. Okay. Since it's not being assigned, it'll be 0. Okay, so set the LED <laughs> pin. So it'll be low. Um, all right, so the next one, last button state equals reading. Okay, so now remember, I've seen this before up here. Really, I didn't know what it was because we skipped it. So what does reading mean? Okay, so reading is just a variable. So reading. Oh, int reading, yeah. yes, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So we, we defined it, we, we created a value called mm -hmm. reading, which is derived by this digital read. Yeah. Um, but now we see down here, uh, reading. So reading is because we've pressed the button. Which could be now be high. So the last button state is now high. Yeah. Oh man, so like, so the last, last button state, state is equal to yeah. reading and reading was equal to this, so yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to go through. So last button state, which is a global variable, is now yeah. high. So now let's assume we've come back into the loop again. Yep. And we've still got the button pressed down. Yep. Reading will now be high again. Uh, then we move down to um, reading not equal to last button press. Last so button state, yeah. reading, which is high, last button press was high. high. Yeah. So now it is equal to. It's equal which, to. Which we need to skip this part now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yep. So now yep. we move down to this. So now millis, millis, millis will yep. actually be maybe 80 milliseconds. How about here? Just say for argument's sake, it'll be 80 milliseconds. In, in last debounce time though, it hasn't got, picked this up yet because we've skipped this part. Yeah, so what do you think last debounce time will be? Uh, Remember, it's, oh. a, it's a variable, a global variable that was set earlier. Last debounce time will be the previous value it was from the previous loop. Yeah, which, which was, was 10. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so now it's kept it until it's been overwritten. So yeah, so now we've got 10. So um, so same millis is 80. Yeah. So 80 minus 10 is 70. 70. It's greater than... It's greater than... Debounce delay. delay. 50. So we're going to... Yeah. It meets the condition. Mm -hmm. And we're going to change the button so, state... Yeah, so now... To whatever is here, which is... Could be... Which is high. So button yeah. state is now high. So then button state is high. And then it will consequently set the LED state high. And then the next one, it'll... It was low before, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Going back to this, you'll detect a change in state. So yeah. when it comes down to this point here, the yeah. Arduino will think it's a low. And at that point, it will say, okay, we've detected a change. Yep. Let's wait for 50 milliseconds yep. until the um, button's finished bouncing up and yeah. down. And then whatever state it is in, we'll just keep it at that. So that's that's how this program works, oh. basically. Oh man, okay, that was... When you're analyzing a program, the best way to do it is to go through it logically, step by step by step by step. Step. You can even write it out on a piece of paper. So yeah. You say, okay, the last button state is going to be set to this, yeah. and then you just go through it step by step, and you go through test cases yeah. to see how the code would actually function. After a while, you'll be able to just look at it and say, oh yeah, yeah, I know how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not me. <laughs> so, yeah. Now Tim gets to see what this whole debouncing program does and how much of a difference it actually makes. It's not so obvious with an LED, but there is actually a fairly big difference. You won't really notice too much of a difference. Because it's so quick to the human eye, right? In yeah. This case. I mean, with a, uh, a flashing light that just barely flashes, you won't even know. Mm. But like with a sauna that goes, you'll know for sure, you know. You'll know. Or yeah. the sauna will try and move, but it won't finish it yeah. straight. The program is... Yes. Press the button. Okay, so yeah, it has actually dealt with... There's not, much, it's not much flickering. Yeah, it's like it's on or off, but right. quickly yeah. or not, you know. It's, it's either on or off. But it's actually not doing that little... The flickering. Yeah, little yeah. flickering. So it's actually working quite nicely. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. Hope you've gotten something out of it. If you enjoy my videos, then don't forget to like. You can also subscribe by clicking any of the buttons on the screen or check out the description below. Next time, we'll be adding the analog tutorial to Tim's Uber project, looking at Ohm's Law and discovering what an LED actually is. So, see you next week.